Hello everybody, I'm Eustace Farmer, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to fix a common problem that people have been having with the Logitech G27 uh, regarding the optical sensor, which controls the calibration of the wheel, so it does go off-center after a bit of time, and that's due to the little optical sensor coming loose inside of the G27, and also sometimes a cracked plastic ring that holds it in place. So we're going to take it apart, we're going to fix it, put it back together, and show it to you in its working glory. So the first things I want to say is, have the proper tools. Don't manhandle anything, because you will break things. You're going to want to have a 4mm Allen wrench, which you see all the way to the left, the little black hockey stick. And then you're going to want to have some fine tip screwdrivers of various sizes. Um, so... I have two Phillips head little electronics screwdrivers and then you're going to have a little flathead just to you know manipulate and persuade things if you will. Another Phillips head on the larger scale maybe a variety uh, just to get those uh, black screws underneath off and then some needle nose pliers just to grab a hold of fine things or hold things in place while you're tightening them. So take the time to make sure that you test each one of these tools to make sure that they fit snug and proper because you do not want to strip a screw. I can't stress it enough. You don't want to be a gorilla with this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take off these um, Allen screws in the center of the wheel and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gotten five of the six screws off. The last screw I loosened, but I didn't take it all the way off. Um, reason being is you I wanted to stress that you want to hold on to the wheel firmly as you're loosening this because you do not want the wheel to fall off once the screw is released because there's a little wire connection behind there and you'll snap it off. So you definitely want to make sure that you hold on to the wheel, put your knees underneath it, and make sure that it comes off in your hand and not on the floor. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take this last screw off and I'll be right back. Okay. So here we are, I took the last screw off, and then the little black center cap just pops right off. And then you're just going to gently fold it back, and it's going to reveal those two little clips there. Sorry for the shakiness, I have to do this with my uh, cell phone because I don't have a GoPro or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop those two clips off that connect to the wheel buttons. That's what those do. So I'll go ahead and loosen those and be right back at you. Okay, so I got it off, but I did it a little differently. Instead of taking the little clips off the bottom here, I just took the one off the back. So I held it in my lap and just um, wiggled that little clip, and it comes off of the back of the circuit board right there. So I just took my little flathead screwdriver, and I gently jiggled it up on either side of it, to the left and to the right, and just kind of shimmied it out of there. Just be very careful. Um, that little sleeve will start to slide up off the pins. Um, you don't want that bending around because you don't want to bend those pins. So make sure that sleeve stays intact. So there it is. So to get the circuit board off, there's two screws. There's one right next to that spring. It's a larger one. And then there's a small one where it says uh, TP10 right there. So you just take those out. And then you gently slip it back, and you'll see that big connector there, and you just slip that off. So I'll be right back with the next step. Okay, so the next step we're going to do is we're just going to remove three screws. So we're going to remove this one, this one, and then this one down here. You don't need to remove the ones with the washers around them. Those are for the paddle shifters uh, that hold them to the back of the wheel. It's not necessary to remove those. It's just something else to keep track of. And speaking of keeping track of things, now you may laugh at me being a dork, but I keep things organized as I go because you will get jumbled up with this. You know, as you see here, my six bolts, my LED piece, the center hub, and then the little screws, sorry for the shadows, are labeled that came off of the circuit board when I first pulled it out and I even labeled which one is left and which one is right because they're different sizes. So that's what I'm doing as I'm going along because I don't want to be hunting for screws. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, so that's the three screws we're going to take off. Okay, so I've got the three screws out, as you see here, and we just want to make sure that we don't tug on that plug when we slip this off. So I'm going to try to do it with one hand, and you just gently slide it right off. The hole for the plug, you're going to want to gently try to turn that sideways, that little um, pin port, you're going to want to turn it sideways and maneuver it out of that hole very gently. So don't be yanking on things. So as you see, you just kind of gently push it down. You can even use your needle nose pliers and then just slip it out. And voila! That's it for this portion. Okay, so the next step. We're going to remove eight screws. And this will be the final step to getting the cover off. So the screws you're going to remove are in these deep holes here. So you're going to have one here, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you're going to need a fairly long screwdriver. I chose this one because you, it's hard to see in there, but the screws are quite fine. So this is the electronic screwdriver. Excuse my big ugly hands. <laughs> Uh, so that's the one I'm using, a Phillips head, and you want it to fit in there. Don't, like I said, please, don't manhandle anything. Because if you strip just one of these screws, you're done. Put it away, you're done. <laughs> so you find it, and you're going to see it has to fit snug. Once you have that, you're good to go. Left to loosen, right to tighten, so we're loosening. And you're just going to go ahead and take off all those screws, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my screwdriver down in there, and I loosened all the eight screws. So you're not going to be able to get them out of the shaft unless you have a magnetic screwdriver or something like that, but that's really not necessary. Um, just gently lift it up from the cord wrap in the center. And again, excuse my big ugly hands. I guess this is not a hand lotion commercial, and you'll see why. <laughs> Alright, so I've got the cover off. I wanted to show you this little plug in the back of the um, piece that we need to work on. There's a little clip in here, as you see. And so I took my... this is very difficult to get off with your fingers, and I wouldn't recommend it. So what I did was I placed two of my flathead electronic screwdrivers, one on each side of the clip, and then with a gentle, firm pressure, I just gently wiggled it back and forth until it came off. So um, that's how I did that. And then this black cover, this will lift off by itself. But you have to be careful of this red wire. This plugs into the side of the this cylinder here. And you don't want that to snap off. And I did not attempt to remove it. It might be able to be removed, um, but it might be soldered on there. I don't know. It's not necessary. So if you're just careful, it will the cover will come right off without even touching that. Now we're just going to pop off this black cover and get to the little um, optical sensor circuit board inside. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that black cover off and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the cover partially off and basically what I did was I just very gently um, at the seam, I just, you know, popped it around the sides just to gently manipulate it. And then once it came loose, you can just go ahead and gently slide it out. You have to be careful of the stuff on the bottom as well. There's this little wiring harness down here. So you want to make sure that you're clear of that when you pop it off. Okay, so this is the optical sensor and it shoots a like an infrared at these little points on this plastic ring. So if your plastic ring is cracked, um, I've heard some suggest to glue it together hold it with the pliers and super glue it together and hold it until it sticks um, you can try that just don't interfere with these little points here and you don't want to get any glue on those those little points there um, or on this um, optical sensor panel uh, so you have to be very neat and careful with that so uh, most of the time though it's just that these screws are loose there's this one here at the top of the solenoid and then there's one underneath now if that one underneath is loose and it's very hard to see see it's right down there to the right of the circuit board you could just see that little glimmer of silver um, you get a fine screwdriver in there and just make sure but obviously you can just you can just jiggle the board 
and if it's loose, then you you know you could tell which one is loose. Mine was not profoundly loose, uh, but there was some play in the screw, so I did tighten it down. And then while I was in here, I went ahead and I tightened those down. They were a little loose, and all the screws on the circuit board up there, on this motor here, down and through here. You know, any screw you see, give it a good tighten. Don't over tighten it. I mean, don't strip it, especially the circuit board screws. You want to do it till it's good and snug, but you don't want to force because you don't want to crack your board. So, and then that's it. And then you'll put this little plug back in, and then you can watch the video in reverse to put it all back together. <laughs> and if you stayed organized, um, it should be a one, two, three easy process. Now, if this does not work for you, um, then all I can suggest is to contact Logitech. I will leave their customer service phone number uh, down in the description, and you can talk to them about it. Maybe they can send you a new um, motor with, op with optical sensor. Um, if you still have a warranty for some reason, <laughs> these wheels are pretty old, but if you still have some sort of warranty, uh, you can take advantage of that. Um, but this is the most common issue is that it's either loose or that little black wheel is cracked. And you can glue it together. I have never glued it together, obviously. So I don't know how that's going to turn out for you. Some people say it worked like a charm. Uh, but I think it all depends on how neat you are. Like I said before, if you're a heavy-handed person or you're not a very neat or organized person, um, don't even attempt this. <laughs> um, and I mean that in the nicest way. Okay, everybody. So I got my wheel all put back together, ready to rock and roll. And I opened up my game. Now, I play Farming Simulator 17, so any of you racing enthusiasts that are watching, don't be laughing. <laughs> it's an awesome game. You should give it a try. Um, so anyway, one thing that really I find that directly influences your centering of your wheel is your dead zone settings within whatever game you play. Now, for this particular game, it defaults at a lot of these at 14%. I found that to be too much. Um, now, at 0%, your wheel will not stay center. Your vehicle will pull to the left or the right or what have you. So I found for this particular game and for my wheel that 10% across the board works very well. Um, this axis number 4 stays at 14% because you cannot change it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if for those that play Farming Simulator, if you'd like to pause the video and take a screenshot, now's a good time. And I'm sorry for the shakiness. Okay, so here we are in the game, and let me just show you. So you see that the steering wheel is center. So there's center on the tractor, and it's center on my wheel. So, like I said, one of the biggest improvements I made was adjusting my dead zone. All right, so I'll show you inside here. I'm trying to drive through the phone screen, so I'm going to hit something. I can see it coming. <laughs> okay, now we'll do a little outside view. So as you see, my wheel is center. Hard to see here. And center there. Now, I have my wheel set at 900 degrees of rotation. Um, but for most racing games, the community recommended setting is uh, 540. And uh, what I can do here is I can pop up a little card on the screen and show you what my settings are. And uh, again, you can go ahead and take a screenshot of that. And there we go. So I hope this video has helped you. And please let me know down in the comments section. Um, I always love hearing from everybody. So, thank you very much for tuning in, and until we meet again, please everybody, take good care of yourself, okay? And bye-bye for now.